Hi everyone, it's Rebecca Coombs from The Healthy Gut and I have the great pleasure of sitting down today with Louise Rose from Rose Cabinet Medicine. Louise and I are talking in Portland and it's the final day of my trip here in America um, following the SIBO Symposium. Uh, Louise has a really interesting story. She started life as a chef and has recently or has moved into becoming a naturopath because she really sees that food is a wonderful source of medicine which is something I believe in completely. Um, but also Louise uh, loves to look at with her patients the uh, combination of the nervous system and digestive health because they're so interlinked. Um, thanks for coming on the show uh, today, Louise. It's really great to have a chat to you. I'd love to talk a little bit about neurofeedback because um, there is so much about that that I think is really important for people suffering from digestive problems or SIBO uh, to learn a little more. Absolutely. What can you tell us about that? So neurofeedback is brainwave biofeedback and it's one of my primary modalities. Uh, it's useful for everybody for optimizing brain function. But what I find specifically with um, people with a lot of digestive problems is oftentimes there's um, coexists a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. um, depression even, and trouble sleeping and these things which neurofeedback can really help uh, kind of reset the brain waves and uh, help the, the brain become more resilient and mm. responsive instead of reactive. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a great link between um, traumatic brain injury as a potential cause of digestive health. There's this two-way uh, highway between the gut and the brain and the vagus nerve is very much involved in that. And um, so when I'm treating uh, people with brain problems, I'm always looking at digestive health. And when I'm treating digestive health, I'm always looking at optimizing brain function. So neurofeedback is one of the, one of the ways that I do that. Do you want me to talk more about what it is and how it works? I think that would be really interesting. I think uh, um, you know people uh, who are watching this video would, would like to know how does it work and, yeah. and what do you do? Yeah, yeah. So I use a system called Low Energy Neurofeedback System, or LENS for short, uh, that was developed by Oaks Labs in California. And it is a, a system where we have an EEG uh, box, which you have sensors connected to the scalp, which read the brain waves coming out of mm. um, the brain. And then the computer analyzes uh, the person's specific brain waves and figures out what the dominant frequency is. And uh, then it gives a little signal back through the same wire to the scalp that's a little bit off of the dominant frequency. So what I, the way I like to talk about it with my patients, it's almost like it figures out where the brain is stuck and then gives a little tiny signal like, hey, you don't have to be stuck. And then the brain itself reorganizes and uh, stimulates change and supports um, more neural mm -hmm. pathways. And what I find over time is that people, uh, it doesn't change who you are, but it might change how you respond to stressful situations, uh, how easily it is for you to come down off of a stressful situation, sleep improves, cognitive functioning improves, mood improves, all these things, which you know uh, is, can be at the root of a lot of things. If we're not sleeping well, it's really hard to heal other parts of our body. And quite often people with SIBO aren't sleeping well because, or digestive problems, because they're not feeling good. You know, mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than when you go to bed and, you're, and your whole digestive system is just feeling mm -hmm. awful. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, you know, it's a bit of a vicious cycle. If your digestive system is right. not working well, it can lead to poor sleep, which can lead to poor uh, health and, and repair. And, Absolutely. And it, it's a trickle effect. Sometimes it's like, uh a big rope with all these different strands and, and you have to tease out what's causing what and and uh, one of my my biggest fundamental philosophies is what are things that we know are going to support health so we don't always have to treat uh, in every individual strand of the tangled mess mm -hmm. but we can always add in things that we know are going to support health you know good nutrition stress management deep breathing good sleep all those things are just foundational 
they are and in my journey to health uh, once I've got my diagnosis with SIBO obviously there was the physical treatment of SIBO that I needed to do but I realized really quickly within the first few weeks that I needed to change so much more than just treating the SIBO so my nutrition my lifestyle my movement my thoughts mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. all of that had to had to change and I had to go and do some work around areas that I hadn't thought about or didn't want to think about for uh, for years and and some of that was a bit confronting to have mm -hmm. to go and, and make mm -hmm. those changes but I'm so glad I did because I'm such a healthier and happier person as a result of that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah quite a journey it's yeah it it's is a, it's a journey it is definitely and you're still on it <laughs> Well, the way I look at it is that it is a continuum mm -hmm. until the day I take my last breath, which hopefully is very far off into the future. I have goals of getting beyond 100. Mm -hmm. um, that every day is a journey uh, of health and wellness, and you can never become become complacent because the moment you take your foot off the pedal you can regress really quickly with your health mm -hmm. and I don't ever want to do that mm -hmm. now now that I know what feeling good feels like. I want to stay that way. Yes. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about hydrotherapy because that's another thing that you do with your patients and I'm really interested to know uh, more about it and how that can be a great treatment option for someone with SIBO or digestive problems. I'm so glad you asked. It's one of my great passions. Uh, the roots of naturopathic medicine come from the water cure movement, the nature cure movement in uh, Western Europe. And uh, to simplify it, it's basically the application of hot and cold water, uh, which has specific therapeutic value of directing blood and lymph flow to different areas. So one of my primary treatments um, for all sorts of things, but specifically for digestive health, is something called constitutional hydrotherapy. Uh, which is applications of hot and cold towels to the torso mm. uh, and the back combined with um, sign machine, so uh, electrical stimulation to the spinal nerves. And the spinal nerves then have the reflex uh, stimulation. So we're increasing blood and lymph and nervous system um, movement through the entire torso which includes all our major organs including our intestines and um, this is a very gentle tonifying treatment and um, it's relaxing and it helps the uh, nervous system of the of the gut um, have its proper uh, stimulation and I believe that it, it really supports the parasympathetic nervous system and allows the uh, migrating motor complex to really come back into, into health. Um, it's a treatment that's best done as a series. So if you just do it once, you'll probably find it's relaxing and you might you know, have a nice bowel movement later that day. But, um, Which is pretty good for... Well, yeah, for a that's a nice people. selling point right there. <laughs> um, but when you can do you know, 10, 15, 20 sessions in you know, over several weeks time, yeah. it has this cumulative effect supporting, um, supporting natural physiology is what it does. And something that was talked about quite a bit at the SIBO Symposium this weekend was around uh, switching back into that parasympathetic nervous system, um, doing what you can to, to get back there because that will aid um, obviously digestion and, and so it's really great to hear that this is a, a really what sounds like a lovely treatment option that can help uh, a body uh, move into that state. Mm -hmm. And I want to say for your listeners too that uh, ideally you would come and get a treatment with a practitioner who has the e-stim machine but there are also quite beneficial home um, hydrotherapy treatments that you can do that uh, that do similar similar things. Right. Castor okay. oil packs. I'm a big fan of castor oil packs for that same reason. Okay. L blood and lymph movement. All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Now, the third thing I wanted to talk to you about today was TRE, which is something that I've got to be honest, I hadn't heard about until I arrived at your house on Friday. And what was really wonderful, I turned up in Portland uh, and I knew nobody and I came on my own to attend the SIBO symposium and Louise put on a pop-up SIBO dinner, which is just so wonderful to be able to come to a dinner uh, in a foreign city, in a foreign country, and not only meet some 
some new people, but know that everything that was served was completely SIBO friendly and delicious. So it Thank was you. it was really great. Thank you. Um, but Louise was talking around about TRE that night, and I was fascinated by it, and which led to us sitting down uh, today and doing this interview. Can you talk to me about what is TRE? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, TRE stands for Tension and Trauma Releasing Exercises. And there are a series of exercises that were developed by uh, David Berselli, who was a, is a, uh, a therapist and a body worker. And he uh, did a lot of work with uh, people overseas in, um, you know, after an earthquake, in aid situations where there was a lot, big, large numbers of populations who'd been through really traumatic events. And he started noticing that people had sort of really uh, innate responses to feeling danger and that we we contract in and we close ourselves in to protect our, our in internal organs. And then oftentimes at the end of you know a traumatic event, he noticed the children would be shaking. Uh, but not the adults. And he started uh, really thinking about that and thinking that perhaps the trembling is something that as we grow up and we become adults, we learn how to suppress uh, because that's a sign of, seen as a sign of weakness in our society. So he, he looked into it further, noticed that in the natural world with animals who are have gone through a traumatic event, they also do this all over body shaking and then get up and go back to grazing and that's their way of releasing the the stress of the um, traumatic event and so he developed a very specific series of exercises to get into a self-induced tremor state so um, it's it's very simple um, and anybody can learn how to do it and I also want to stress that it's not just for people who've had trauma but all of us in our modern society have small traumas and certainly um, stressful situations throughout our day that bring us into that fight or flight that sympathetic um, tension and we're not allowed to discharge that. We're not actually running away from the danger or staying and fighting. Uh, and so that uh, all those hormones and all that stress kind of get stuck in chronic patterns in the body. So what we're finding with the TRE exercises and the self-induced tremor state that you get into is that it's really allowing the body to discharge that stored tension and trauma. And um, one of my personal interests in this is noticing that um, it can really help, again, bring more of a parasympathetic dominant state. Uh, also can, it, the tremors move through the fascial layers of the body and can release chronic holding patterns. And we know that, um, you know, sometimes there's real functional problems with digestion like pelvic adhesions or chronic back pain that has constricting the nerves to the digestive tract like there can be other causes of dysfunction um, for, for good digestion and so the TRE is another one of those um, treatments like constitutional hydrotherapy that and neurofeedback actually that is really beneficial for everybody and it's working to bring back a um, normal, natural, physiological state uh, so that we're releasing chronic tension, trauma, and um, people report better sleep, better relationships with people. Um, it can help with mood and there's just all sorts of benefits. Um, and I think when I think about my own journey with my chronic illness, uh, I was in pain a lot. I, I felt sick and often overwhelmed and angry you know oh gosh there'd be some days when I was just furious at the world for the un how unfair it was that I was sick 
no one else seemed to be as sick as I was. Um, and I could just see an enormous benefit uh, for people with SIBO uh, because, you know, sadly, those of us who have suffered from SIBO or are suffering currently, it's generally a chronic illness and we've often been sick for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, can I tell you too, Rebecca, one of the things I really love about TRE is that it's empowering the patient. Um, you need to learn it from somebody, but once you have a few sessions, and that's individual depending on how much you need, but usually just a few sessions, you then are empowered to go practice it on your own and you can, you can do it. It's very inexpensive, you can do it without any equipment, and it's a tool that you have to use um, on your own and it, it can be very empowering for people who feel powerless. I think that's a really great thing that uh, quite often uh, us SIBO people have been uh, seeing a lot of specialists and uh, medical practitioners who have often spent a lot of money on trying to get well again. And so if there is a technique that we can use which is pretty inexpensive by the sounds of things and is something that we can do at home, you know, it just sounds wonderful. Yeah. 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 If, uh, if you're interested in TRE, uh, I think the best thing to do is to Google a TRE practitioner. Um, I have looked and there are practitioners in Australia, um, but there are also practitioners all around the world. So the best thing is to jump onto Google and, and see what you can find. David Berselli has written three uh, wonderful books about it. Uh, I think his most recent one is called Shake It Off Naturally. Uh, I recommend all three of them. They all offer different um, things. And um, one of the organization's websites where you can find practitioners is treforall.com and I'll include the links for those at uh, the end of the video. Louise, thank you so much for your time today. If people want to find you, where's the best place for them to go? My website is rosecabinetmedicine.com. There's all my contact information there. Wonderful, and I'll also have the links down below. I'm Rebecca Coombs with Louise Rose, and if you've enjoyed watching today's video, there will be more videos coming out in the very near future talking about my highlights from the SIBO Symposium in Portland. So make sure you subscribe to my channel at The Healthy Gut so you don't miss an episode. Thanks, Louise. Thank you, Rebecca. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.